In case you were doing something else last night, there was quite a college basketball game played in New Orleans. The Kansas Jayhawks defeated the North Carolina Tar Heels after trailing by 16 points in the first half. It was the biggest comeback in a national championship in men's college basketball history. And in fact, this was a tournament with many historic moments, including the final game this weekend of Duke's Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski. Author and sports writer John Feinstein is here with me now to talk about it all. He's also a columnist for The Washington Post. John Feinstein, we are so glad to have you here to talk about all of this. This outcome last night was not what you would have predicted looking at that first half. <laughs> no, absolutely not. And it's funny because Bill Self, who won the national championship coaching Kansas in 2008, made the comment after the game that he asked his players at halftime, what's harder, coming back from nine points down with 212 to go or 15 with 20 minutes to go because when they won the national championship last in 2008 they were down nine in the championship game with 212 to go and in today's college basketball with the 30 second uh, clock and the three point shot that people take all the time 15 point lead isn't what it used to be and so and, and with nine minutes to go Kansas was actually up six and then Carolina rallied. So, so what happened? I mean, how did, how did they uh, turn it around? Well, they started getting the ball inside more. They took advantage of their size and the fact that Carolina's big man, Armando Baycott, had a, 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 a turned ankle from the Duke game and wasn't quite 100%, although he played very well. And they started to make some shots. North Carolina couldn't make a three all night. They were five for 27. Kansas wasn't that much better, but they were six for 17. And ultimately, they won by three points. So they've got a lot. They got a lot to celebrate. At the same time, John Feinstein is there celebrating. They are. They're basking in the glow. This huge win, but there's also this cloud hanging out there because they are. They've been charged with so-called level one violations from yeah. the NCAA. Remind us what all that is about. Well, it goes back to the FBI investigation of college basketball in 2017. A number of teams, including Kansas were cited in that investigation. And the NCAA, as usual, has taken forever to try to adjudicate most of these cases. They just, a month ago, sent LSU, which was mentioned in the investigation, a notice of allegations. And Will Wade, the coach there, was fired. But he's never won national championships. And uh, now they, Kansas has received a notice of allegations of serious charges, not like giving kids T-shirts, more, more significant stuff than that. And Mark Emmert, the president of the NCAA, said last week, we're close. We're, we should have a decision on this case before next season starts. Honestly, I'll believe it when I see it, Judy. Taking a, why does it take so long? Well, some of it is because they don't have subpoena power. So it's harder to get people to just sit down and talk to them. And they, they can't charge them with any crime if they lie to them, if they, they can't perjure themselves. But also because the NCAA is a bureaucracy. And bureaucracies move very slowly, as you know. So you mentioned another team uh, that was part of this tournament, Duke. Um, and they were out of it after, after Saturday night, losing uh, to UNC. And you mentioned, and we we're talking about a lot of history, Coach Mike Krzyzewski, after 47, is it 47? 47 years altogether. It's hard, to, it's hard to even comprehend that he's been coaching for that many years. He, yeah. he, I'm so old, Judy. I saw him play <laughs> for Army uh, in the NIT in the late 1960s. Um, and I've known him since he coached at Army. And his record is, to me, the second most extraordinary in the history of college basketball, behind only John Wooden, who won 10 national championships. He won five titles, went to 13 Final Fours, won more than Wooden, broke the record this year, uh, and won 30 games. 20 is considered a benchmark. He won 30 or more games 16 times. And all the numbers are just ridiculous, most wins in college basketball history. And he's someone I've known well. And he's a better person than he is a coach, Judy. I know there are people out there who will pull their hair out when I say that, but I do know him. Those people don't. And it was a that's sad saying ending. saying something. I mean, he's got an incredible record as a coach. Yeah, so. that's, that's my point. Yeah. And it, it was bittersweet because they made the Final Four, which is always an achievement, but they lost to their arch rival in his last game. And you know what? Carolina deserved to win the game. They made the plays down the stretch. What, what makes the, the Mike Krzyzewski record? What, what, what makes his legacy? Well, I, I think it's everything. Uh, there's a lot of things that he doesn't talk about publicly, things he's done for people. My brother had cancer 21 years ago, and he's fine. But Mike Krzyzewski picked up a phone and called him 
and to cheer him up right after his surgery. And my brother said to him, you need to play Casey Sanders more because he's a typical fan. And Mike said, yeah, I'll give that some thought. Well, Duke won the national championship that year, and he did play Casey Sanders more later in the season, and Bobby still takes credit for that national title. But that's the kind of thing yeah. he does all the time. So to me, his legacy is more as a human being than it is as a coach, and his legacy as a coach is remarkable. Is the game different, changed now because he moves on? Oh, it'll be different, not only because he's moved on, but Roy Williams has retired, right. and, and, and so many of the, the great coaches are, are ret retired or retiring, and we're never going, we will never see anybody coach at a ma major school for 42 years again. You can't do it. It's too draining. Is that, I mean, that's what I wanted to ask you. Is, can we, will we see another coach go that many? No, I don't believe we will. And, and you see it now that uh, even coaches who are successful move on. Uh, and Tom Izzo, who's a great coach at Michigan State, who's been there since 1995 as the head coach, talks all the time about how the chaos that is college basketball now is wearing him out. And it, it wears everybody out because you have to re-recruit your whole team every year because of the transfer portal and the one and done rule. Well, as an alum of Duke University, a lot of us are really proud of Mike Shishak. And you should be. John Feinstein, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Judy. Always a pleasure.